What's going on guys, Victor here. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome aboard. We are on Lake Ida today. We're gonna do a little peacock bass fishing. I got my really good buddy and charter captain, Johnny Stabile. You guys can find all of his stuff linked below. What's the first thing we're doing today, Johnny? Catching bait. Catching bait. So he's getting geared up. We're gonna go around the lake. He's gonna mark them on his machine right here. And we're looking for a bait fish known as shad which are gonna be the primary thing we're fishing with today, which is the bread and butter of this fishery right here, is the shad. I gotta use an extra heavy net to throw during the middle of the day like this. There's a good ball right there I should have thrown on. When you throw during the day like this, the shad can see the net coming, so you gotta use an extra heavy net so that it sinks faster. Here we go. Oh, that was it. Smoke them. Smoke them. I can feel them in the net. You guys can see all those scales flying off right now. We didn't really get that many, to be honest. That's disappointing. A lot more. What's that? Hey, it's a start. It's a good start, but we definitely need a lot more than that. So, put these guys in the water here. And we'll just let them hang out. So basically what we're gonna do is just let those shad swim they'll knock off some of like their main scales and then they're gonna essentially poop and they're really stressed out from just being caught so they're gonna let out a lot of ammonia so we want them to do that not in our bait tank where they're gonna be all day um, so we're gonna let them do that in that basket there and in five minutes they'll be calm and we'll pour them in our live well so this is what we're gonna be fishing with today the threadfin shad if you guys are any any of my saltwater guys out there this little thread fin right here, it looks like a thread fin herring that we got in the saltwater world. These guys are a lot smaller, kind of like the size of a pilchard, a lot more fragile than the saltwater baits though. So like Johnny was saying, he's purging them in the water. You guys see my hand is covered in scales just from him throwing the net one time. So we want to make sure we get all of the stuff that could potentially kill them into the water. That way when they go in here, they're good to go, ready for some peacocks. Our baits are nice and purged. Now they go in the live one. All right guys, we got a live well full of juicy threadfin shad right there. And there's only one thing that makes this guy happier than a live well full of bait, and that is a good night's sleep. And that's exactly where today's video sponsor comes in, Helix Sleep. Big thank you to Helix Sleep for sponsoring today's video. I don't know about you guys, but sleep is super important to me. If I don't get a good night's sleep, I'm super grumpy the next day. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your needs and shipped right to your door. What I really liked about Helix is they have a sleep quiz to match your unique body type and sleep preferences to make the perfect mattress for you. They have something for everyone's taste, including partners to find the perfect compromise for both of you. So Brooke and I went on the Helix website, took the sleep quiz, and based on our results, we got the Helix Midnight Lux, which was the perfect mattress for us because we tend to sleep on our sides. My favorite part is the memory foam feel of this mattress. I've had my Helix mattress for about a month now and I love it. It's the perfect balance of soft and firm. The best part is Helix offers a 100 night sleep trial along with a 10 year warranty and there are financing options and flexible payment plans. So after the trial, if you don't love it, they'll pick it up for you and you'll get a full refund. And I love that you don't have to go to an annoying mattress shop because Helix delivers right to your door for free in the US. We added on a Glaciotex cooling cover on top of our mattress, keeping us nice and cool in Florida. I love my Helix and I think you would too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix. Click on the link below or go to helixsleep.com slash landshark for up to $200 off your Helix sleep mattress plus two free pillows. Once again, big thank you to Helix Sleep for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to fishing. And this is gonna be our rig all day long. 12 pound tough line fluorocarbon little mustad beak hook right there and then he likes to fish a little split shot just to get our shad down because we're in a little bit of a deeper water and then let me show you guys what we got so these baits have calmed down a lot you guys can see that the water color is not normal that's because he's got a special formula which helps in their uh coating and their slime look at that shad right there he's a little guy and we're just gonna hook him right here in the little nose part and that way they stay nice and lively. Oh, fish on! You got a clam? Probably. You got something big, don't you, Johnny? Yeah, I do. These guys are onto something with the whole trolling. All these fish right now, so half, most of the year they're under the, all the docks. 
this time of the year they're all out in the open because they're looking for that deeper water. It definitely feels like a clown, Vic. Do you want to grab the net for me? It's going to either going to be that or a gigantic catfish. <laughs> um, and then the other half of the year they're out. Oh, yeah, it's a clown. Um, the other half of the year they're out in this deep water looking for that warmer water. And, uh, yeah, we're just, we're just starting to move. Whoa, first fish clown dive? How cool is that? I'm surprised he hasn't jumped yet. Usually they'll they'll jump. All right, I'm gonna slide them right into the net here for you. Come on. Yeah, buddy. First fish in the boat is a clown knife fish. Wait Ooh. till you guys see how cool this fish is. You guys, look at that perfect hook set. How lucky is that? First fish on Lake Ida with Johnny, South Florida Fish and Charters, and we got ourselves a clown knife fish. Dude, he was yeah, he's buried in there. Pliers? Yeah, yeah, I got it. How'd you fish, young man? These guys have really wicked looking teeth right there on their tongue. They have teeth all around the whole outside of their mouth. Um, this is a clown knife fish. Very exotic um, to South Florida. Yeah, they have a nickname of the featherback because of this little dorsal fin right here. Kind of looks like a like a small feather. Dude, look, yeah. at his, look at his fin. He's like a snake. See that? I love how they use this fin. They're very unique. They are. And this, this is the, literally, if you guys want to book a trip like this, this is the only place in all of North America where you can catch this fish is this body of water right here and Johnny specializes in them. Yep, we do this a lot, just coming out for fun and uh, it's a good time. They were introduced from the aquarium trade to a bunch of people. This used to be a popular aquarium pet and uh, people re released them and now we've got them as a sport fish here. So let's get this guy back in the water. They swim backwards too, see that? There he goes. Bass. This was also put here, right? To uh, control stuff or no? No, they were just uh, introduced as a game fish by Ow. the state. These guys do hurt. You can lip them like a bass. <laughs> <laughs> or you can just let them go. They have a really sharp gill plate. He got me, but that was a sunshine bass. Another sunshine bass? Oh, that one's full that might be a peacock. All right. Well, on again. So far, I'm about to be two fish to Victor's zero. Oh, 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 oh. All right, we got a double header. Big old peacock bass there, nice. Oh, oh. I got a monster. <laughs> Vic, is that your biggest peacock ever? Oh, for sure. Nice, Brooke. That's a good one. So, all right, guys, check it out. Of course, the girl always gets the bigger fish. Look at that cute little guy. Little peacock bass and then brookies. You can see the color difference just in these two fish alone. And amazing in how much variation there are between fish species. Mine's chubby. He's been eating well. He's got a full belly there. What do you think it is, Brooke? Probably another peacock. That one uh, seems to be more steady tension, right? I don't know what Victor's doing on his side of the boat, but... It's another lighter. good one, too. These guys are so beautiful. I love the orange on their throat. Just so pretty. And every one looks so slight, just a little bit different. Beautiful fish. All right, doubled up with my boy Johnny. Oh, come on, pull, be a big fish. You can't beat light tackle. Ooh, okay. I don't think he knew he was uh, awake yet. You can't beat light tackle fishing no matter what you're doing. I think it's gonna be a peacock. Peacocks are, I, I call them like the freshwater amberjack. They like to stay up and down with you, real big runs and kind of just Oh, that's dig. a nice one. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, I'm gonna release my. All right, guys, check it out. These are all super quality sized peacock bass too. All like one and a half, two pound fish. Look at that trace of red. And kind of like the bullseye snakehead video that I just did. You guys can see they have that false eye on the back of their tail. Such a pretty fish. First largemouth bass of the day. It's not a big one, but you don't get as many largemouth bass in here as, as peacocks, do you? No, not really. All right, guys, so we've been kind of fishing, moving, spot hopping a little bit here and there. We're marking them on the live scope um, and on the side scan. So we just want to get them a little fired up. We're going to take, we have some shad in the net there. We're just going to fling them out here. It's a little windy, just like that. 
and let those all those baits will kind of scatter around and hopefully the peacocks will come up and start feeding and peacocks will get fired up and we can start getting back on that bite again because you caught what you said 75 fish yesterday uh probably more than that but yeah 75 would be a base number and today we've probably only caught about seven or eight yeah so it's been kind of slow but that's fishing right yep hate to say it but it is what it is. Brick's got a good one on, guys. Well, the most drag I've had to pull all day. That is a stud. That's going in the live well. That's going to be a big fish. Or he's foul hooked. Oh, uh, maybe. It's kind of fighting like a clown almost. Oh my but gosh, it, if it's it, a clown, I'll be so excited. But it, it's probably going to be a peacock, to be completely honest. Come here. Oh, oh it's man, it's a one. big peacock. Let is me get it? the net. Yeah. yeah. Or Vic, get the net. Yeah. Holy cow. Oh my god. Oh my god. Just leave, just leave him in the water. He's like he's like a five pounder. Oh, Brock. Yes, baby. Look wow. at the size of this fish. I think that's got to be your PB, Brock. I think so. Here, in front of the boat. Well, that is, I think, my biggest peacock bass I've ever caught. I think it was like almost two years ago now that we fished out here with Johnny and we caught some big peacocks. So I don't know if I've ever caught a bigger one than this, but this is a solid, beautiful fish. We're actually going to put it in the live well so Victor can take a thumbnail with it later. But and beautiful, so get a photo with it beautiful too. fish. That's our biggest one of the day. And I think my seventh peacock of the day, Mick. Or no, seventh or eighth? I'm gonna say eighth. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you're, you're smoking me. This guy feels decent. We pulled up to this spot right here, and you guys see there's another boat here. And that is because this spot is on fire. Yeah, that's smoking. Jeez. Yeah. There he is. That's a decent one for sure. I fought a lot harder than I thought. Oh man, look at all the blues in this guy. You guys look at this fish right here. So this reminds me of a redfish. When redfish eat a lot of uh, shrimp, they get this blue in their tail. Look at that. It's just amazing how every single fish has a little bit of a different variation. Some are more green, some are more orange, and also depends on when in their spawning cycle they're at. But like even look at the bullseye on this guy. The yellow is just so pronounced in this guy's tail and all that blue. Getting a bite here, getting a bite. Let's see. There it is. Swam oh, right to the boat. There we go. Oh, oh doubled up. Oh. Nice hey, one. We're, we're just adding to the species list here, you know. Oh my God, that's the first time I've ever seen that happen before. This is also an invasive fish in Florida. Look at that guy. That is a crazy looking fish. Probably was in someone's fish tank at one point and someone released him to the system. These guys are like armor plated too, just like the uh, gar. Really cool, I could see why someone would want to have them in their fish tank, but they have since flourished. And uh, they're yeah. They're algae eaters. Yeah, they're beneficial to the live oh. That's why it's so crazy tank. that you caught one on a shad because they're algae yeah, they're eaters. Yeah, they're herbivores. Uh, gar, it's just a big gar, sorry. I thought, it, I thought it was a chain pick wrong. Do you want to put that thing in your net? Holy smoke, it's big. Is that gonna, do you want to net that? Why not? It's not gonna get stuck. Dude, her teeth are not that bad. Gosh, he's so big, I thought he was a chain pickerel. Oh, you sucker. Then I'm from the butt first. <laughs> I can't, because he's gonna swim out if I get him from the butt. Come on. Yeah! Dude, that is a big gar. <laughs> Jeez. I've been fishing out here for like, I don't know, 15 years or so, and I've never, ever, ever seen a pleco eat a shad and get hooked in the actual mouth. Johnny, that's because you're fishing with me. The first time we fished together, 11 pound cloud knife fish. The first cloud knife fish I ever caught was because of this guy right here, and it's the biggest cloud knife fish, cloud knife fish he's put in this boat. And he hasn't got a bigger one since then, which is insane. Good things just happen when me and Johnny fish together. Right? 
Man, we are on the exotic species today, guys. Look at that. That is a crazy looking fish. So it looks like someone's deadline was left in here and you guys can see because of his teeth. All right, let him go. Okay. Remember how hard they are to hold, uh -huh. right? So if I remember one thing about this fish, they are... These fish are extremely muscular. We actually did a catch and cook on Johnny's boat. We caught a bunch of these one day. And uh, these are one of the most prehistoric fish out there. Extremely tough to clean. Um, just a really cool fish and we are on the species. I think we're on species, what, number seven today? We got gars, plecos, peacocks, largemouth, sunshine bass, cloud knife fish. It looks like he's got like an old scar there. Oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> I just saw my toes flash before my eyes. <laughs> as long as you don't drop them on my toes. I wanted to see this. Alright, so that looks like a healed over scar right there. Oh my okay, gosh. I'm gonna let him go. I always wear boots, but I was like, I'm freshwater fishing. I can wear sandals for once. <laughs> I'm not kidding. They are the. I have held a lot of fish in my day. The hardest, slimiest, just like most muscular pound for pound fish ever. Shoot out of your arms. We can't compete. She's smoking us. She's we doing were, good. I think I just have a little bit more patience than the boys do sometimes. And patience pays off. I really want to catch a clown knife fish. That would be really exciting, but. I think this is just another big Ooh, oh, it's a another big one, bro. Big, big one, big one. There we go. go. Oh god, the real stuck. There we go. Man, you are on fire, girl. Wow. Here, let me get up in front of you. Oh my gosh. Yeah! Another big <laughs> one, Brookster. Wow, that is nice. I was gonna say Brookie's on fire. Another good one. That's like a six pounder. Yeah. So, Maybe. so he's at this least is five. like the first like pronounced um, hump of the day so far. They all haven't really had that big of a hump, but this one's got like the first little hump, which means that this is a male. Right. That is correct. Very like the nice. other one that I caught was I'm pretty sure it was a female. Didn't have a hump, right? That's right, man. These what guys a, are cool. What an awesome fish. If you put him in the live well, he'll probably brighten up too. Got us a nice large mouth here. If you ask some of the people that hate the peacocks and the exotic fish, they'll tell you that these fish don't exist in South Florida anymore, but they do. And there it is, nice healthy one. Here we go, Brooke is back on. Okay, Brooke. On again. Doesn't feel as big. What is the secret? That's what oh, I want to know. Oh, it's a sunshine bass. Oh, nice. It's a big one too, wow. Here, well, let me um, pull this guy in the boat so we can talk about him. I'm just gonna use the lipper. These guys don't have teeth. You can lip them like a bass, but this guy is really frisky and green still, so we're gonna use the, the gripper there. This is a hybrid between a striper and a white bass. So they kind of look just like stripers, but they're actually a hybrid. They're stocked here by our local DNR. Uh, for a game fish, and they're a lot of fun. They fight probably pound for pound, just as hard as a peacock does, and uh, yeah, we get them on the uh, cooler days. We typically don't get these in the summer, but in the cooler days we get them. What do you think it is, Victor? I, I don't know, he's doing some crazy maneuvers. It is a, hybrid? a sunshine bass. Hybrid? Is yeah. it hybrid or sunshine bass? Either or. These guys fight really good too. Nah, he's coming in too easily. I think if it was a big one, he probably would have made another big run. He's Looks decent. big. That's an eater. That's our second eater. Yeah, if he doesn't break me up on the uh, trim tabs. You want a, a net? Sure. Yeah, that's a good eater right there. Oh, nice job, Johnny. That's a good size one for dinner. He's probably two and a half pounds. And uh, yeah, plenty of yield for two people to eat this fish, so. Pretty good. Typically don't uh, let you take them home, but normally Johnny's a catch and release charter, but just for the sake of the YouTube video, I want to show you guys what these things taste like. We've taken them before. They are open. You can keep them. There's a size limit and there's a bag limit. They make great game fish, but they're also good for dinner. But to respect him as a charter captain, he is a catch and release only fisherman. Okay guys, I think we got a clown knife on right here. They have really small mouths, so Johnny says to really let him eat it, so that's exactly what I'm doing. What do you think, Johnny? Maybe. It's kind of just like sitting there. Yeah, it could be a clown. 
I mean, sometimes they thump it and sometimes they just pick it up and sit with it. All right, well, we are tight to something. You want it, Brick? No. You never caught a clown. Yeah, go ahead. Um, if, I, I think it's a clown. Yeah? Yeah. It's, okay. it's doing like the big aggressive head shakes like a clown might fish does. Let's see if he comes up, we'll get a jump. Oh, dude, he wants to go under the boat. Oh, oh yeah. it's a clown, it's a clown. Big one. They fight so distinct from every other species we caught today. Just these huge head shakes. They think it's them using that big body of theirs. They're always really tough to get in the net. Woo! Yeah, he's, he's a good sized one. Okay, well, we've had two good bites since we've been here. We went to another spot a little bit earlier, so I think we still got to get Brookie on one. She has not got one yet. I think he's hooked okay. I didn't. It's hard to tell. He didn't fight much out there, so he's fighting at the boat, huh? Yeah. See if you can slide him. He's hooked well from what I can see. Dude, he sees that net. He don't want any part of it. Yeah. Right. Let's see if we can aim him. Yeah, that's Got a good sized one. Yeah, that's a big one. That is not a bad way to wind down the day. Beautiful clown knife fish. The first fish we caught, and it might be the last fish we caught. I really want Brookie to get one. These things are straight up aliens. And we've eaten these, but we're gonna let all of the ones today go. No one really makes a big deal about killing these guys because I don't think that they've really, they're not really expanding further than this body of water. Get a load of that. See ya, dude. Be the clown, be the clown. the net back there. You, you gotta be real easy with the net, Brooke. Yeah. Meanwhile, oh, shoot, we got another one back here. Big, big, big. Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. Yeah, bring me the leader when you can. Come on, come on, come on. We were about to quit fishing and the last fish of the day is my first ever clown knife fish. I've been wanting to catch one of these fish for a long time. They're probably one of the most exotic, craziest fish I've ever caught. They're just so cool, so unique. This guy is literally drumming. I can feel him like thumping. So neat. I lost one earlier. I saw it come up and like roll on the surface almost like a tarpon come up and just like shine. But finally got one. Thank you, Johnny. You're very welcome. I'm glad you got it. This is our third one, so we all caught one today. Yep. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Day. Ricky was the absolute all-star of today. I think she caught, I don't know, like 15 peacock bass. I caught the least amount of fish of anyone. <laughs> I know that for sure. But um, me and her had a great time. So if you guys want a trip like this, go ahead, book yourselves a trip with Johnny. And if you guys are interested in the freshwater stuff, you guys can actually check out his channel. I'm going to have it linked below. Johnny does a bunch of freshwater stuff as well as some saltwater stuff. So, yeah, we, yeah, we caught a bunch of different species today. Some stud peacock bass and we all caught a clown knife fish. I'm really happy that I caught my first one. So it was an all around great day. Okay guys, so we harvested two peacock bass from today. The two big ones that Brookie caught, we just took a nice double photo with and uh, let them go. But these are like the two perfect size peacock bass to eat right here. Kind of like a two to three pound snapper. So I'm gonna flay it up with the six or seven inch Dexter flexible fillet, which you guys can find linked below. And you guys can always save 20% off Dexter knives, use my code Landshark. Okay, so we just run and outwind our peacock. Now I'm gonna go back up. 
from the tail. And um, me and Brooke, I think, have eaten peacocks, I want to say, like, two or three other times. And every single time I've eaten them, I really enjoy them. I kind of would compare it to, like, a, the snapper of fresh water. Real nice meat on them. We brine these guys right before we got in the truck. Put some fresh water in there, some nice um, ice. Got them super cold. As you see, they're real firm. Look at that. It's not a bad looking piece of fish at all. Huge rib cage on these guys. Bass, I mean, just like largemouth bass, they got a huge appetite and they can fit some really big prey. You guys see their stomach is really big. There's a bigger species. Well, there's a couple of different species that you can find in South America. This is one of the smaller of, this is one of the smaller species. The really big ones that you guys see in like the Amazon River and in Brazil, I don't know which kind that is, but this is the butterfly peacock. This is the one that was introduced by FWC. And these fish were actually introduced into the state of Florida to manage other species like tiger oscars and the cichlids that were getting out of control because you guys see we have so many invasives down here because we're in a tropical environment and they all just flourish. Not really good for the environment, but for fishermen, I mean, it's great. The fact that we can catch so much diversity and variety, even in just one body of water, I mean, we caught like eight different species today. We go so yeah there's two terms that biologists in florida use there's non-native which is peacock basses and then there's invasive so invasive fish are considered to pose a threat to our natural fish whereas non-native which is something like a peacock bass biologists determine they don't pose a threat to the natural wildlife they're both from other countries they did not exist here naturally but there's two different terminologies for the different species. Like a snakehead, which you guys just saw in the last video, that's considered to be invasive. These pin bones right here, and I think this is gonna be the perfect amount of fish between these two fish for me, Brookie, Laura, and Johnny. You guys, look at that and tell me you wouldn't eat it. Look, barely any bloodline, nice firm fish, doesn't smell whatsoever, and I'm excited to eat it. So I will see you guys in the kitchen. Normally you guys see, I always like to experiment in the kitchen, do different things, but you cannot be a good old fish fry. And that's exactly what I'm doing. It's like one of those comfort foods. And I think one of the best ways to eat fish is fried because fish doesn't have that much inherent flavor. So we're gonna make a little seasoned batter. And instead of frying up a whole peacock, I want as much surface area as possible for my batter. So I'm gonna do, let's say about that big of a piece about that big of a piece because the more flour you got on these bad boys the further you're going to make your fish go and uh just the more flavor you're going to get on them i think and look at the difference in color this was weird brick brought this up at the flay table this was one of the peacocks and this is the other and both of them were bled both of them were caught from the exact same lake you guys can see they're pretty much the same size i have no idea why one is that color and the other is that but it is pretty interesting if you ask me season flour let's go if you guys know me you know exactly what this is and that is garlic gotta do lots of garlic and then onion i like onion powder because onion powder is pretty sweet and then paprika hopefully this is paprika and not cayenne i always wonder if one of one day we're gonna put the wrong top on the wrong one some pepper Lots of lots of salt. Okay, and then we're just gonna go straight into our flour batter. Make sure we get every single side. We got our oil nice and hot, and we're gonna go straight in. So we got the oil nice and hot, straight into the grease. And I'm gonna start with the thinner pieces first, since I know I got some tail sections. That way they all kind of cook evenly. Up. All right, guys, first batch is done. Look at these beautiful. Oh, yeah, baby, look at that. Come on. You can't be just simply fried fish. I know my tongs are covering about 90% of it, but you just can't beat it. Right. 
But now, the most important thing, as soon as the fish comes out of the oil, always salt them. That salt's gonna stick to that batter. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Look at this. It's delicious. Mmm. You can't beat fried fish, can you? Mm mm. And we haven't really had fried fish in a while, I feel like. No. So we brought up some ketchup. We literally couldn't even wait to eat these because we are so hungry. It doesn't need anything to dip it in because it's really good, but it's kind of fun to just dip into dip fried fish into something. But absolutely delicious. Really white, flaky. I got no complaints. Wait. I wouldn't say. You're not like filming like my waist, are you? No. I feel like some people might think that fish in like fresh water or I don't know where we were fishing might have like a muddy kind of taste to it or something. But this tastes like any other just delicious white meat fish. It's really good. Unfortunately, Johnny and Laura couldn't join us, but it's kind of funny. Yesterday we were thinking, how many fish should we take home for four people? This is the two fish and me and Brooke are going to devour it. I mean, we already ate one. I'm about to eat the second plate full. And that just goes to show you, good fish is good fish, no matter where it comes from. I don't care if it's living on the side of the road, in the ocean, good fish is just good fish. And most fish are good, so long as you take proper care of them. These guys were bled, we're eating them the next day. I got no complaints. I wanna thank you guys so much for coming out and hanging out with Brookie and I, Johnny. If you guys want to book a charter with him, check him out linked in the description box below. Till the next time, see ya.